Watkins. I'm the director of the Division of Strategic Initiatives at Chapel Hill Valley Community College. And I have the pleasure of introducing our uh, foundation chair, Ms. Rosalind Ross Durden. This former West Rock Communications Manager retired in 2019, and she's still trying to figure out how to slow down and take it easy. Ross has been affiliated with numerous clubs and organizations over the years. Although she has enjoyed sharing her time and talent with them all, serving as chair of the Chattahoochee Valley Community College Foundation Board is high on her favorite list of things to do. When she is not at a board meeting or volunteering in the community, Ross enjoy, enjoys writing and watching reruns of Western. Her favorite by far is Gunsmoke. Ross graduated magna cum laude from Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama with a bachelor's degree in communications. She and her husband, Dennis, are active members of Prospect AME Church in Fort St. Georgia. They have two adult children and seven beautiful active grandchildren. Please help me welcome Ms. Roz Durden. Thank you, Dr. Watkins. I appreciate that. Good evening. You look amazing. Truly, you do look amazing. This is the first time we've hosted this event, the Hall of Fame, in this venue, and we are excited to be here, and we are also elated that you've decided to join us this evening. We have a spectacular day, evening, planned for you, so get ready, get ready, get ready. Right now, I have a very important task to do, and that's to recognize the CBCC Foundation board member. If you are a board member, please stand at this time. Stand up. Please remain standing for just a second. Yes, I want you to take a look around and look at these board members. Without hesitation, I am proud to acknowledge some of the most dedicated, engaged, enthusiastic, committee, committed folks that you will ever, ever meet. They are outstanding, and that's an understatement. I am so proud to be affiliated with this board. Let's give them another big round of applause. Thank you so much. Unwavering support by the board. Now, did you enjoy the band? Yeah. Let's give it up. <laughs> Smith Station High School Jazz Band, they were outstanding as they always are. Now, the music is not gonna stop at that point. Later in the program, we have Warren Thornton. He's called the Sax Man. I think he, uh, he entertained us last year. We thoroughly enjoyed that, so we're so happy that he's back with us again this year. We will also have CBCC's own Ensemble Choir. They're going to perform following dinner, and the sex man will perform doing dinner. So thank you so much. Now, in case you have not heard, we have raffle tickets. Someone may have already been to your table asking you about purchasing raffle tickets. Beautiful diamond earrings. Let me tempt you here. Beautiful diamond earrings. So if you've not purchased a raffle ticket, please, please, please do that. And listen for the details of that later in the program. Now at this time, I would like to invite my pastor, a great leader, a visionary, a man on a mission of kingdom building, Reverend Willie Bo Barbara, pastor of Prospect AME Church in Fort St. Georgia to the podium. Pastor Barker. For the invocation. My brothers and my sisters, let us pray together. Lord God, preserver of life, the giver of hope, the creator of all that was and is, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for a day that we have enjoyed, and we thank you for the promise of a day that we have not seen. Before we ask, dear God, we want to say to you again, thank you for life as it is. For although we may have needs and desires, without you, we would not have anything. We are grateful. Dear God, keep us as a nation. Keep us as institutions 
And even this institution, dear God, as we celebrate the lives and the accomplishments of those who are here, let us understand that nothing occurs by accident, that you have enabled and gifted us to be able to achieve great things so that others will have promise in their lives. Oh Lord, as our world is in turmoil in many ways, we still believe that you are the grantor of the promise that all things work together for the good of those who love you. We pray that you will bless those who protect our democracy. We pray that you will give us compassion for war-torn nations around the world. And we ask you, God, that you will guide us to bring up new generations that will be better than we are so that they can accomplish more in your name. And Father, finally, as we have enjoyed the fellowship of each other, thank you for the meals that have been prepared for the nourishment of our bodies. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your meal. Introduce to some, present to most, our charming, distinguished, accomplished MC for the evening, Teresa Whitaker. She's a veteran journalist whose career has spanned more than three decades. You can find her on the anchor desk at WRBL on weeknights at 5, 5.30, 6, and 11 o'clock. She's passionate about service and is an active member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Inc. Teresa is a published author. She's also an Army brat. And she's mom to her fur baby, Noel. Please give it up for Teresa Whitaker. Three decades. You know I started when I was 12, right? Good evening to all of you and welcome to the 2024 CBCC. Hall of Fame. We made it to another year. Now we have enjoyed great music, a great meal, and great conversation. Now it is time to get the business underway for tonight. So right now, if you would, join me in welcoming Rhonda Turner and the CBCC Choral Ensemble. They're going to bless us with three selection. So give them a hand.
now we'd like to thank Matt Hanner and Motion House Media for the production of the student videos and their continued support of our event. The students are the reason that we're here every year. And as a former CBCC student, uh, <laughs> if you attended CBCC, go ahead and give yourself a hand. All right. I am grateful for institutions like CBCC because they allow you to live life while you're pursuing your education. And many of you know my story. I've told it before that I had really lofty goals of attending an HBCU private school, but my parents, um, you know, I didn't check the finances first. And so I did not, so I was accepted, but my parents, you know, politely told me, um, I just, we just can't swing that. So what I did was I, I went to CBCC and I wanted to help my parents um, you know, get money. So I worked full time and took my time at CBCC. So I was able to do that and help my parents uh, get money for college. And then I was able to transfer after graduating from CBCC to a four year institution. And had I gone with my original plan, certainly I would not be standing here tonight. So I'm grateful to God for going ahead of me and already seeing this night. So, glory to God. Right now, if you would focus your attention on the screen for our student videos. My name's Hillary Penner and I'm majoring in nursing here. So I actually ended up moving to Georgia from Denver. Um, and before I started applying to nursing schools, I kind of checked out a bunch of different schools. And when I came to talk to them, they just, they were really the only ones that truly sat me down and genuinely seemed interested in giving me all the information that I needed to kind of apply to the program, apply to CBCC and just make sure, I don't know, it just didn't feel necessarily like I was just whoever walking through the door and I was kind of just another tuition payment to them. It genuinely seemed like they cared. Um, and I just didn't get that feeling from the other schools when I went to go talk to them. So moving from Denver to Georgia, in and of itself is already a big move. And once again, it does cost a lot <laughs> to make almost really a cross country move, essentially. Um, so when I got into the program, I of course was ecstatic because I finally got into nursing school, but then the question of, oh no, how am I going to pay for nursing school, of course came up right after that, so. You know, I didn't have a college fund waiting for me. I didn't have anything like that. I was raised by a single mom, so a college fund wasn't really something that I grew up thinking I was going to have at any point. Um, so I did, you know, know that I was going to have to find other ways to pay for college. There was going to have to be an alternative. I was going to have to find scholarships. I was going to have to do good in order to get scholarships because that was how I was going to pay for school. I always knew I wanted to be a nurse. Um, you don't just get, become a nurse without going to school and without getting a degree. So I knew there had to be other resources that I had to look out and, and get in order to do this lifelong dream of mine. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe I got an email from them saying like, hey, we have financial aid. These are the resources that we have for that. Go on to the website and it'll show you the scholarships that we have. Um, but they did have directly that hey, go on our website, look under financial aid, and we have all the scholarships listed and take a look at that. So that's what directed me to that area. CVCC definitely has a lot of resources. So not only do they reach out to you a ton, I mean, through like email, through text message, with you know any resources that you might need in like the library or financial aid or anything like that. So I, I love that they're spreading that as much as they possibly can to all the students here. I'm in my final semester of nursing school, so after this, I graduate, I get my degree, hopefully pass the NCLEX, fingers crossed, and I'm a nurse. But especially this semester, I don't know if it would have happened had it not been for me getting that scholarship. I genuinely do not know if this last semester, me graduating, me becoming a nurse would have been possible had I not got the scholarship that I got. For anybody that's kind of on the fence about if they want to go to CVCC, I would definitely say at least just come do a tour, come meet some people. Everybody's really friendly, which is very helpful. 
um, and definitely consider it. I think the resources that they have, once again, are absolutely fantastic here. Um, the convenience of classes, they really make everything super convenient as much as they possibly can for students. You work nights, if you work day and need night classes, anything that you need, they, they're super flexible with it. Um, and it's a, it's a great school to go to, it really is. So I definitely am unbelievably grateful to CBCC and the foundation. This has changed my life tremendously. Um, like I said, I always wanted to be a nurse and it was just hurdle after hurdle and I'm finally here. And if it was not for the scholarship, for the foundation, being as generous and doing what they did for me, this may not have really been possible. So years ago, I started my fire science degree through CVCC. Basically, life happened. I never was able to complete that degree. So between kids and getting married and whatnot, just never had time or money to finish the degree at the time. CVCC sent out a, an email to the Columbus Fire Department, you know, to try to get some people to come back for the fire science program. So I jumped on that opportunity, especially with the grants through the foundations. I was able to help get a lot of my college paid for. So by putting two kids through college and paying for a wedding and other things, I really didn't have the money for myself. It was all going to the kids. So those foundations grants really drew me back to CVCC. My biggest challenge getting my degree uh, was uh, life itself. Just working, uh, raising kids at the ball field, at uh, all the extracurricular activities. Uh, uh, again, all my, my time went towards my, my kids and just did not take the time for myself to finish the degree. So time has been the biggest challenge. And with CVCC offering the online courses, that was a, a huge benefit for me. As a battalion chief here at Fire Station 8, uh, Columbus Fire and EMS, a lot of the skill sets that I've learned at CVCC has really had a positive impact on my job here as well as helping coach and mentor others in the department. From coaching and managing personnel, QA and a lot of our reports and runs, as well as a lot of the hazmat classes that I took years ago, which has uh, really molded me in my career. I would highly recommend someone coming to CBCC if they're kind of on the fence deciding what they want to do. I have encouraged multiple people here at Columbus Fire and EMS, as well as at my part-time job. A couple people that were talking about finishing or starting a degree and I've recommended CVCC. The, the online classes are, are easy. You can do it at your own pace and it just works well for me. So I've really encouraged them. I would like to just send out a huge thank you to the foundation for allowing people like me that's, you know, or anyone that needs help paying for college because the, the donations or tremendous help. Like with myself, I'm 28 years in my career and it was a personal goal that I really wanted to accomplish. And I wouldn't have done it without the help of the foundation. One of the motivating factors of me going back to CVCC is one of my aunts. Uh, she started college when she was 76 years old and a friend of hers told her, said, do you know that you will be 80 years old when you graduate college? Her answer to that was that she would be 80 in four years anyway. So you're never too old to finish a degree. So no matter how old you are, if you're looking at finishing your degree, go ahead and do it. she would not have been able to do what she has done. And then Kevin says, life happened, and life does happen. Two kids in college, uh, a wedding, and he's trying to go to school as well. Had it not been for the foundation, had it not been for you, the supporters, he wouldn't be where he is today. So one more big hand for those two. I think both Hillary and Kevin, uh, are you here tonight? If you are, please, please, I, I, 
Please stand. Please stand. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Now, Hillary, it's my understanding that you're going to draw the name for the uh, diamond earrings. Is that right? Uh, David, are we ready for that? I thought we might sell a few more, but we can draw now. Spin the tickets around some more. Okay, someone said spin the tickets around some more, so. <laughs> Just put your hand up if you want a ticket. Okay, he's asking if you would like a ticket, please raise your hand. Okay, so we're gonna move forward, David. I think we have a few people that are interested in purchasing, is that good? Yeah, we're gonna get it. Okay, all right, so. I'm going to tell you a little about the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame event started in 2008, and it is CBCC Foundation's largest fundraiser. The awards recognize individuals connected to CBCC in three categories, alumni, service, and athletics. This year, as of yesterday, David, I think I'm correct in saying, we have 78 sponsors and a total revenue of $102,500. A big hand. We certainly appreciate our sponsors. So let's, as a matter of fact, let's acknowledge our sponsors at this time. Our top sponsor, Platinum, is Affleck. Let's give them a big hand. Our gold sponsors are, we have an anonymous supporter, and we're grateful for that. We also have Beam, Steve and Ken Butler, Phoenix City Schools, Russell County Sheriff's Office, The Cohen Family, W.C. Bradley, and West Rock. Let's give our gold sponsors a big hand. Thank you so much. Our blue sponsors are Alabama Power, I Heart Media, Russell County Commission, Russell County School Board, Sonovas, and Susan Wiggins. Let's give them a great big hand of applause. Thank you so much. We also have 17 Pirate, I'm sorry, 11 Pirate, 15 Friend, 35 Supporter, and 5 Golden Patron Sponsors. Let's give all of our generous sponsors a round of applause. Thank you so much. Without you, we wouldn't be here. It's just that simple. I would like to introduce a person I'm proud to know and have enjoyed working with on numerous occasions in Phoenix City and in Russell County. She's a woman of integrity who strives for nothing less than excellence. Jackie Screws has over 36 years of higher educational experience and has worked at both the university and community college levels. She began her educational career at Tuskegee University in Tuskegee, Alabama. In 1989, she transitioned to the Alabama Community College system and joined Sparks State Technical College now a campus of Wallace Community College, Dothan. Screws worked her way up through the ranks in student affairs, serving in numerous progressive leadership roles. From 2000 to 2018, she served as Dean of Student Affairs and Dean of the Sparks Campus for Wallace Community College, Dothan. On February the 1st, 2018, Screws became the sixth president of Chattahoochee Valley Community College, CDCC, Phoenix City, Alabama. Screws has earned a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's of education in student personnel administration, both from Tuskegee University. She is a resilient professional woman who believes in education and she strives to provide all students and the community quality educational services to enhance their quality of life. Screws gives of her time and talent by serving on numerous committees and boards throughout the Chattahoochee Valley, the state of Alabama, and the Southern region. She has been married to her husband, Larry Screws, for 34 years. 
and they have two beautiful daughters, Kendra Alexis and Morgan Sinclair. Please help me welcome to the podium the sixth president of Chattahoochee Valley Community College, Jackie Scrooge. Thank you, Roz, for that great introduction. Each year I try to get them to uh, not do that, but they want to do it anyway, so I guess I, I will, I'll allow it. But at any rate, good evening, everyone. As I look across this room at this audience, you all are simply beautiful. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome you and to thank you for being here on behalf of the entire Chattahoochee Valley Community College family. It is a pleasure for me to stand here as president of this great institution. I want to let you know that all of you are special. All of you are special to us and I appreciate you for supporting us. But I would be remiss in my duties if I did not recognize some special groups of people who help us to operate as a college successfully. I want to first personally thank our foundation board. And we're going to have a discussion um, about this after the program at our next foundation board meeting. But they do so much for our college, and I think that they deserve our heartfelt appreciation. I want to ask one more time for our foundation board members, please stand to be recognized. Thank you all so much for what you do. To our sponsors, this year's response to our request for support was amazing. I know that a lot of people are getting donor um, fatigue, but our donors come through every year, and we appreciate you. I hope that you will peruse the sponsor list on the inside, the front cover of your program, and those that have been noted on the screen. I would like to also recognize the elected and appointed officials who are in attendance tonight. Please stand to be recognized. Appointed and elected officials. Thank you, Mayor Lowe. Thank you, City of Phoenix City. Thank you, County Commissioners. Thank you, Judges. I see you. I know some of you are reluctant to stand up, but I know you're in the audience and we appreciate you. The adage that it takes a village, a village to educate a community is indeed true because we could not be successful as a college without our educational partners. We are honored tonight to have representation from the K-12 sector as well as our four-year college partners. This includes the Phoenix City School System, the Russell County School System, Smith Station High School, and Troy University, Phoenix City. Will you all stand to be recognized at this time? I don't know why people are reluctant to stand. Dr. Foley, Dr. Sherrod, Dr. Dion rosser Mims. Y'all stand with your teams. I know you're here. They have tables and we love it. We absolutely love it. We are partners in education and we work well together. At CBCC, we believe that the seeds of charity must be sown within our campus, nurtured by our faculty and staff, and then spread far and wide across our communities. In this regard, we conduct an employee giving campaign each year. I would have it no other way. We are happy to have members of the finest team in education with us tonight. Will the administration, faculty, and staff of CBCC please stand? Okay, and I want you to know these are all donors. They're all donors. We are honored tonight to also have one of our previous president's awards 
recipient who was not able to receive that award last year, but she's here tonight. Ms. Lise Patterson and her daughter, Natalie, are with us. And you may know that Lise Patterson and her husband, Doug, established a scholarship in memory of their late son, Chris. They do a 5K run every year, and that scholarship helps students like the ones you saw on the video and the ones that stood up um, tonight. So we would like to ask Ms. Patterson and her daughter, Natalie, Natalie to please stand. Students are the reason we serve as educators, and we are delighted to have some of them with us tonight. You have already seen our wonderful choir, and our heartfelt thanks goes out to them and Ms. Rhonda Turner for the awesome job that they do in, in creating music and providing performances for us. We are also honored to have our ambassadors, those are the individuals in the blue shirts in the back. Wave your hands, ambassadors. We're so thankful that you all are here this evening. I want to also thank the Smith Station High School Jazz Band. They have over the years served as entertainment for us, and also Mr. Warren Thornton for providing the entertainment. I don't know if Mr. Thornton is still here, but they do an amazing job, and we're just appreciative that they could be here and participate in this program. Lastly, and most importantly, I want to congratulate our Hall of Fame honorees who will be officially recognized in just a few minutes. Mr. Steve Osteen, distinguished athlete. Mr. Lynn, I'm sorry, Miss, sorry Lynn. Miss Lynn Green, Green Frakes, distinguished service, and Dr. Lorenza Farms, distinguished alumnus. You have shown servant leadership in your professions and in your community. You have given of your time, resources, and talents and you have represented our college and your community well. Today, we congratulate you and we welcome you into the CBCC Hall of Fame. Congratulations to you all. I want to underscore the importance of tonight's event. This Hall of Fame program is vital for expanding access to education at the college by eliminating financial bar barriers that students often face. It serves as a cornerstone for educational equity and opportunity. Proceeds from tonight's event will provide scholarships for needy and deserving students in the Chattahoochee Valley region. Just to add some emphasis on what we mean by eliminating uh, barriers to education, from summer 2023 to spring 2024, the college has awarded a total of $105,700 to 83 deserving students, all from funds that were raised by our CBCC Foundation. And that is something that we should celebrate. So let's applaud them. <laughs> Last year, a component of our program was the kickoff celebration for our 50th anniversary. And true to form, tonight marks the culmination of this momentous period in our history. To this end, we chose to embrace the theme, celebrating our past, present, and future. Therefore, photos from past events, milestones, students, Leaders and employees who have paved the way for our college have been incorporated into, into tonight's um, decor. We recognize that our story is one of resilience, evolution, and infinite possibilities. Each chapter, whether filled with triumphs or challenges, contributes to the narrative of our collective journey. As we celebrate today, let us do so with gratitude for the past, mindfulness of the future, of the present, and optimism for the future. As we enter the next chapter of our history, we do so carrying the torch of excellence, innovation, and equity, ensuring that every student finds a path to success and every community we touch is uplifted through our endeavors. We thank you for sharing 
this journey with us. In my closing, I want to recognize a deserving individual with the President's Award. This person has served on the CDCC Foundation Board for more than 10 years in various leadership capacities. She is a true servant leader and a huge supporter of the college, attending many of our programs and events. If she is not in the building, you better believe that she has a huge conflict. She is indeed one of our greatest advocates. It is my pleasure to present the President's Award to the Chair of our Foundation Board, Ms. Roz Durbin. See, Ross, that's what happens when you won't retire. <laughs> this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Ah, oh, the Hall of Fame. Wherever you go in this area, in this region, and perhaps across the country, you'll no doubt run into someone from CDCC or in this esteemed Hall of Fame because we're everywhere, aren't we? Yes, some of the who's who in this community are, have already been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and now it's time to induct the newest three. So please welcome Dr. Sherry Taylor and Chance Corbett as they will make the presentation for the Distinguished Athlete category. It's my pleasure to be here tonight with you as a, uh, an alum of CV, um, a former inductee as well, and a parent of a CBCC student. I'm very proud to see everyone in the attendance tonight. Thank you for what you do for this college. The category, Distinguished Athletic Category, the requirements to be nominated for the Distinguished Athletic Category for the CBCC Hall of Fame includes Athletes must have completed their tenure at CBCC no less than eight years prior to the current induction year. Outstanding CBCC single season performance or career performance. Outstanding post CBCC athletic accomplishments, whether that be Olympic, paraprofessional, or amateur. The 2024 inductee is someone that I have known for over 33 years. Many of those years I worked for him at the Sheriff's Office um, when I called him Lieutenant and even Chief Deputy. Many of those in attendance will have called him Coach. The 2024 inductee into the CBCC Hall of Fame in the Distinguished Athletic category is Mr. Steve Osteen. coaching career, Coach Osteen's path was defined by service and leadership. After graduating from Central High School in 1976, he enrolled at CVCC in 1977. Biggest thing I remember as a student, I obviously was having to go at night classes and I uh, got started in the winter months of 1977 as uh, I would leave CV and then have to report to work for a third shift at the Phoenix City Police Department at uh, 11 o'clock at night. He began a notable career in law enforcement. His law enforcement career included commendable achievements, 
such as being named Russell County Deputy Sheriff of the Year in 1987 and serving as patrol commander with the Sheriff's Department. Chief told me at that time, uh, Chief Larry Brewer, who was a big advocate of attending Chattahoochee Valley, he attended there himself, as he said that uh, education doesn't make a great police, it makes a great police better. Coach Osteen's transition to coaching began in 1993 with the Phoenix City Parks and Recreation. His appointment as the head coach of CVCC's fast pitch softball in September 2000 was a turning point, marking the start of an era of significant achievements for the Lady Pirates softball team. Uh, I still kind of remember Dr. Federico telling, asking me, he said, Steve, don't just come and be here for the two years that your daughter's probably coming through because she was a junior in high school at the time. And uh, I surely didn't expect to stay this long, but I told Dr. Federico that I would stay as long as Sheriff Basel would allow me. This will be my 24th year, and surely when all of this started, I didn't expect it to last near this long. Coach Osteen's coaching philosophy extends beyond the field. He and his wife, Jane, have used their faith and love to embrace those they encounter. This family-oriented approach extends into Coach Osteen's professional life where for over 40 years, his humble nature and competitive spirit have been instrumental in shaping the lives of countless student athletes. He and Jane have created a nurturing environment for student athletes, treating them as an extension of their family. Their support for students encompasses both athletic training and life mentorship, exemplifying the qualities of a true servant leader. As for being inducted into the Hall of Fame, Coach Osteen considers it one of the highest honors. Among recognition in my life, it's got to rank right at the top. Uh, I'll be the first to say it's uh, kind of like my salvation with my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not worthy, but humbly I'll sure gladly accept it. And uh, there's no way that I can compare with the other people of their accomplishments in the uh, Hall of Fame but I do believe I can compare with anybody there with my love for the institution of Chattahoochee Valley Community College. a number of current players and team members who were able to attend tonight. They are what it's all about, and I would like for them to please stand and be recognized.
especially thank the previous presidents, deans, and athletic directors that I've been able to work with and learn from and gratefully serve with here at Chattanooga Valley. Also, a thanks to the other coaches from the other sports that, quite honestly, I love working hand in hand with. And whoever I'm around, if I'm around you for any length of time, I will try to take something from you that I feel like I can use to better my life and to use your material to help further other people's education and ability. President Scrooge, I cannot thank you enough for both allowing me the privilege to coach here and for your unimaginable support for myself and the softball program. Again, thank you. The softball program has flourished more under your administration than any other time since softball began at CV in the 1980s. Dr. Taylor, thank you so much your amazing support and guidance. You likewise have worked timelessly for all the softball improvements that have occurred under your administration as our new students. Your constant enthusiasm really inspires me daily to try to do better and to be a better person. Athletic Director Ben Hicks is another person I cannot thank enough for his support, guidance, and friendship. He has said since the day he was appointed that his first priority would be the softball facility, and he has stuck to his word. President Scrooge, Dr. Taylor, and A.D. Hicks, I know I would not be here today except for the amazing support of the three of you. A special thanks to the foundation for all that you do for this college and also for the work along with Mr. David Fletcher who works well with us and everything that we can do to better this organization. To the Hall of Fame Committee, thank you so much. This would not be possible without your generous support for me. Sheriff Heath Taylor, I want to thank you for being here tonight. I'm sure it will come as a shock to a lot of people in the room tonight to find out that you assisted me in coaching my team here at CVCC. Words cannot express how much you mean to me. You are so much more than a friend. I would have to see you as family, and that goes for your parents as well. I love you and thank you for being the greatest sheriff that Russell County has ever had. And that is saying a lot, because I worked for two of the other great sheriffs in this county. <laughs> we are blessed. Also, I would like to recognize the group at your table, since I have worked with, around, or for your guests tonight. Fellow officers and Russell County Commissioner Chance Corbett, Russell County Commissioner and previous assistant softball coach, at CVCC Ron Castello and his lovely wife Beth, Chief Deputy William Alexander and Lieutenant Mike Loyless and Lieutenant Stanley King. <laughs> to my family, I have several family members here tonight. My sister and her husband, my nephew who is like the son I never had, and his wife, Kenneth Smith, who is like a son to me, and his wife. My assistant coach, Brady Singletary, who has been my running partner since elementary school, and his lovely wife. About the only thing keeping me and Coach Singletary from being twins is DNA. <laughs> he is my lifelong supporter. My daughter, who is my only child, and her husband, who has become like a son, 
I am very blessed. My daughter Candace is my go-to for everything. I love you. My greatest motivation and my absolute best friend in the world, my grandson, Benton Jinks. <coughs> Most importantly is my wife. She has been my rock for over 40 years. Any recognition I have ever been blessed with should have her name on it. None of it would have been possible without her. I love you. <laughs> I do love you too. It's a topic that I love this institution and it's very emotional to me, but I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Mrs. Osteen, I love you too. <laughs> and now, for our distinguished service category, please welcome Nicole Jackson and Brenda Griffin as they make this presentation. Ms. Frakes graduated from Auburn University with a bachelor's degree in education. She had a dream to be a physical therapist and Chattahoochee Valley Community College helped her fulfill that dream. My dream was to be a physical therapist and so I went to the University of Alabama and took my prerequisites and I'm so thankful that CVCC offered physics so I took my last semester of physics at CVCC and I'm so happy I made a B can remember what I made, so that's kind of where I was in my history. She has been an integral part of her family's business that has now served the community for 60 years. She and her work family learned about cable and internet as the technology was being invented. Mrs. Frakes served as CEO of Beam since 2003 and served as president of the company until 2022. Being part of the equation for my father's vision and and so I just I, I, I think that I was kind of the cheerleader so is what I think I was <laughs> yeah I think that the the group of people there uh, have have gone toward a team building um, and you know sometimes it's not easy beyond her professional achievements Miss Frakes has been an active and passionate community leader her tireless service and unwavering commitment have benefited organizations, including but not limited to the United Way, Russell County Historic Commission, and Project Greenlight, Inc. Her dedication to these organizations exemplifies her deep commitment to civic engagement and community development. Well, I think it's also a vision of the family that, that uh, Russell County and Phoenix City and Lee County have given so much to this company and so we just want to give back to it and um, you have big conglomerates and uh, big companies that do the same for all of America but I feel like that our focus on our community is what we need to be because a lot of times um, average sized communities get lost in the shuffle. We just just feel like that they've 
given to our community and to us as a company. So I think we want to give back. Helping people, that's kind of our goal in the world. Beyond nonprofit organizations, Ms. Frakes has played a pivotal role in providing critical infrastructure to the community. She has been instrumental in offering free cable, internet, and Wi-Fi services to public schools, local government offices, and public pavilions, ensuring that these essential resources are accessible to those who might otherwise go without. Well, I'm humble and I, I'm just in awe that, uh, about this award and I just want to thank everybody for what they did in recognition. It's really, it is, it's really a humbling experience and thanking everybody. Distinguished alumnus. Please welcome Vicki Williams and Mrs. Florence Bellamy for this presentation. To the transformative power of education, Dr. Parms' journey from a young student to a respected educator and author is truly inspirational. So I graduated from Central High School in 1991 and was able to earn a basketball scholarship to Chattahoochee Valley Community College, which was one of the best things that ever could have happened to me. Following his graduation from Central High School, Dr. Parum embarked on a transformative journey by securing a basketball scholarship to attend CVCC. Under the guidance of coach Doug Key, he distinguished himself as a standout student athlete, marking a significant milestone in his life. Um, basketball for me was, uh, was a great opportunity, but for me, it was a, a vehicle for me to be able to receive a quality education while at CVCC. I was able to work, I was able to play basketball, and I was also able to do really well with my work, my lessons, so much so until after my 
Um, my first couple years there, I was able to, um, to finish with honors. His academic and athletic prowess led him to further success at Alabama A&M University and beyond. Today, Dr. Parham's is a leading voice in educational consulting, focusing on at-risk students and the author of an influential book that guides educators in empowering these students. It gave me two primary things. It gave me an opportunity to, to receive the foundation that I was truly needing, and it gave me the confidence that I can go on and achieve some of those other things. So then with that foundation, I was then able to go on and receive my, my undergraduate degree, a master's degree, a specialist degree, and my doctorate degree in educational leadership, policy, and law. I began teaching, I began a career in education because I really wanted to give back to individuals who reminded me of me and, and my plight. And that is why I became an educator. And so I taught for three years. I was an assistant principal for four years and I was a principal for 16 years. And I completed my last few years in the last couple years in the central office down at Russell County as the director of at-risk attendance and alternative learning program. A testament to the transformative power of education, Dr. Parham's journey from a young student to a respected educator and author is truly inspirational. One of the things that I would say to an individual who is considering Chattahoochee Valley is that you cannot go wrong with that decision. It is a great opportunity for you to, to go and get everything that you need to be successful. It is a great opportunity for you to go and oftentimes the expression is used that the sky is the limit. Well, the sky is truly the limit. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can actually do it and you can obtain it while going to CVCC. so great, not that I'm so important, but if someone perhaps has some extra time on their hand, and if for whatever reason you chose to write my life story, for whatever reason, please let it be said that Jesus is indeed the best thing that ever could have happened to me. Thank you so very much. President Scrooge, thank you so very much for being such a progressive leader. Those who know me, they know that sometimes to a fault, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. So if I don't mean it, I promise you I would not say it. I had an opportunity to walk around the campus the other day and I was truly starstruck. But thank you so very much for all that you're doing for my beloved as we used to call it back in the day, CV. To the foundation, thank you for all of your support and everything that you have done and are currently doing. To the selection committee for thinking and not robbery, to select someone from what we call the place where I live, the Hill. Thank you so very much for, for selecting me to the individuals who have joined me tonight. If I could just take a second to, to recognize them. My family, immediate family, right here in front of me. Wife and daughter are here. I'll tell you what, if you were staying before I get in trouble. <laughs> you are just staying, my immediate family, my siblings. school and college. Thank you so very much. I truly appreciate you coming out and showing your support. My decision to attend Chattahoochee Valley Community College was without a doubt the best academic decision that I ever could have made. It gave me an opportunity, as you heard, to receive everything that I needed to go on and to be successful. There were a lot of things that I could have I could have done, but it gave me all of the tools 
Those of you who know me, you have heard my story. I had a lot of issues separating all of the, the struggles, the socioeconomic struggles that were going on initially. I had a lot of problems separating what I oftentimes refer to as the two worlds when you're having to find clothes in the dumpsters and the garbage cans and having to go through all of those things. And so I, I would oftentimes go to school and, and I did not understand initially the importance of a quality education. So then I, I, I failed grades, failed classes and all of those things, but I, I had some caring adults, I had some caring educators who poured into me and my life slowly began to change. And so I, I, I stayed in Phoenix City and I made the decision to go to CVCC and that truly served as the catalyst for me to go on and fulfill all of those dreams that I had and continue to fulfill the dreams that I have. So I'm so thankful for everything that I was able to obtain while attending CVCC and I'm so thankful for all of the teachers and all of the scholars who poured into me while at CBCC. It is not something that I have ever taken for granted, and it is certainly not something that I would take for granted today. Thank you guys so very much for everything that you have done. You know, I have always had an affinity, even with the, even with the things going on in my home life. I've always had an affinity for math, but I've always hated statistics. Not because I had problems with qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis, not because I had problems with chi-squares or Pearson's, Pearson analysis, not because I had problems with measures of central tendencies like mean, mode, median, or range, not because I had problems with any of those, but because I know that statistically speaking, that I should not be standing here today. But because I know that statistically speaking, that I should be somewhere on the side of the street, that I should have been a, a dropout, that I, I never should be standing before you today. But had it not been for caring individuals, had it not been for God strategically placing individuals in my path, had it not been for caring individuals at Chattahoochee Valley Community College who cared more than just me as a basketball player, had it not been for caring individuals at CBCC who saw me more than just a number, but who actually took time to talk to me and saw me as a student, had it not been for coaches who actually talked to me and poured into me, had it not been for individuals who poured into me after two years when I made up in my mind that I was not going to go on to school, but because I needed to quit, because I needed to help and assist my family, but they would not allow me to do it. Had it not been for those individuals, I know that statistically speaking, that I would not be where I am today. So I'm so thankful for all of those individuals who poured into me over the years, all of those individuals who encouraged me, all of those individuals who told me that I really could be somebody, not just giving me semantics, but truly told me that I could be somebody and told me that I could make a difference in this world. I'm thankful for all of those and words truly cannot express the, the gratitude that I have. I was approximately 16, 15, 16 years of age the first time I, I heard it. And it was from a, a gentleman by the name of, of William Miller Body. There were several individuals who were in the room at the time. But for some reason, when he spoke the words written by this, this gentleman by the name of, of Edgar Albert Guest, it seemed as though I was the only individual in the room, and it said something to me. It seemed as though the, those particular words were penned only for me. And since that day, since that particular age, they, they stayed right here. And that is what I will leave with you this evening. And my hope is, my prayer is, that the same words that touched me and the same words that motivated me and continue to inspire me will somehow touch somebody here tonight when I tell you that somebody said that it could not be done, but he with a choker replied that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face if he worried, he hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that could not be done, and he did it. Someone scoffed, oh, you would never do that. 
at least no one ever has done it. Oh, you will never do that because you live on the poor side of town. Oh, you will never do that because you fail grades. Oh, you will never do that because you don't have the pedigree. Oh, you will never do that because of all of the negative things that, that were against you. Someone scoffed, oh, you will never do that. At least no one ever has done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat and the first thing he knew he'd begun it with a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quitting. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that could not be done, and he did it. There are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done, that you cannot get the degree, that you cannot have the life that you want. There are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one all of the dangers that wait to assail you. But this is what I say to all of them. But just buckle right in with a trace of a grin. Just take off your coats and go to it. Start in to sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done. And I promise you, you will be able to do it. Thank you so very much for this opportunity. <laughs>
A big thank you one more time for all of our scholars. <laughs> Teresa, Teresa Whitaker, thank you so much, friend. A superb job as usual. Let's give it up. A big shout out to Beam. They did the video uh, for us of the inductees. I mean, a big round of applause for Beam. Outstanding job. CBCC staff, including David Fletcher, Shamika Nelson, Betsy Bishop, Dr. Watkins, the maintenance department, and many, many others who work so tirelessly behind the scene. Thank you so much. Now, it's my understanding there are donation cards on the table, so please feel free to take advantage of the card and support the foundation if you've not already. Thank you so much for that. Finally, David, I understand we have five minutes left in the auction. I think that's correct. Okay, so if I understand, David, we have two checkouts. One is for, uh, let's see, checks and cash. And then the second checkout would be for debit cards. So listen out for David to give the additional information regarding the auction process. That's it for this evening. I just want to say thank you so much for showing up this evening. We have a wonderful uh, crowd here tonight. You look absolutely beautiful, and it looks like we're probably going to have to remove that wall next year because we are growing and we're so proud of it. So again, good evening. Thank you. Thank you.